Hey folks, it's me again. I thought I'd share with you um, some insight that I just recently acquired, uh, struggled for is probably the better word, and some of you may be struggling with it too, so I thought we'd talk about um, collider bias. Now if you recall, collider bias is a subtopic of what we call the DAGs, directed acyclic graphs. Now if you recall, the, direct, the collider bias is a problem where you have a collider, you of course have your exposure, and you have your disease, and you have your arrows pointing this way and this way. Okay, and of course we also have this one here. And the problem, the question, or what we're told is we're told that when we control for this, so when we either introduce or we, we, we take it out, we are going to introduce a bias. And so the question, of course, becomes, you know, why does controlling for the collider introduce bias? And so I, uh, I, I, I found this paper that was just had a brilliant explanation of why this happens. It was, uh, it was, um, it's a journal article uh, from 2010 by, uh, by Stephen Cole. And I'm going to leave the link too, so you guys can read it too. Anyway, so the problem here is, of course, let's begin first with a hypothetical situation. You begin with 100 people. And of these 100 people, 10 caught the flu, but they have no symptoms yet. Now, of these asymptomatic people, they all go to a convention, and at this convention, they serve 50 chicken sandwiches and 50 egg salad sandwiches. Now, here's the big point. The egg salad sandwiches, as is often the case in epidemiology, they're tainted. So, um, so if we were to just uh, calculate our probabilities, our, our expected uh, values, we would expect that the number of people who have the flu and ate a chicken sandwich to be exactly the same as the number of people who have the flu and got an egg sandwich. So it's 50-50. As a matter of fact, if we plot it on a graph, we see this, right? And the risk of any of them coming down with a fever is going to be exactly the same. But nothing, the fever hasn't happened yet, all right? Now we're just looking at flu and egg salad, okay? But let's move on, okay? So in our example, 55 of you will come down with a fever. So now we can separate groups by whether you got a fever or you didn't, okay? And so when we separate them, we get this. Okay, first of all, take note that in the group that got a fever, okay, you have five who ate the chicken sandwich and they have the flu, okay, or they got a fever, okay, so, and we have five who did, who ate the egg salad sandwich and 45 who did not get the, who do not have the flu. This is later on once we find out, okay. So we basically, the point though is actually, here's what we look at. We have five and 50, okay. As a matter of fact, amongst those who do not have a fever, we find that 45 of them ate the chicken salad sandwich. We should expect that because like I just said, the egg salad sandwich is tainted. So we cannot have anybody here. This must be zero, okay. Everybody who's got a fever has got to be up here in this group. But notice what is about to happen. Because we stratified or controlled for or separated by fever, which is a common effect of both causes, like here, okay, we get that the risk between the chicken and egg salad is 0.9. It's no longer zero. Now, when you first look at this, you may be like, well, wait, what's going on, uh, you know? And what's actually happening is not that mysterious. It, what's happening is that you're mixing two different causes with a common effect. So this is a cause and this is a cause. This has a risk of A and this has a risk of B. But once we mix them in this bag, we have A plus B. And we, unless we can somehow separate them again, We've kind of mushed everything together here, and so our risk here will be something different. 
as long as we have, we could, it could go back to zero, which would be even more troublesome because all of a sudden we get the right answer, but not for the reasons that we think. We were just lucky, okay? So selection bias. So collider bias is just a type of selection bias. Now, the first time I saw this, I was like, huh? It took me a while to wrap my brain around this idea. So I don't blame you if it still looks kind of cryptic. If you want, go read the article. Like I said, the link for these folks, they really explain, they might even explain it better than me. Hopefully I tried to lead, I, I did a pretty good job. But the point though is, once again, here's the point is, when you control on an effect of two different causes, okay, you're going to have this mixing and mashing of your, of your uh, results that is going to artificially produce a relationship that is not there. Whether we have this arrow down here doesn't matter. Okay, this mixing of these two causes, and I know, this and this, um, whenever you look at these arrows, remember, that's exactly what it means. You go from here to, a, it becomes a cause, and this becomes a cause. So, this is why we get the collider bias. Once again, I recommend, check out that paper. It's a really great source, and hopefully, at least what I did here helped you out a little bit. Okay? Okay, well, if you got any questions, let me know, okay? Thanks a lot.